Hello, my name is Gerd Grau from York University in Toronto, Canada. And so today I'm going to talk about our work on creating smart carbon fiber composite structures using another novel um, fabrication technique, and that is printed electronics. So before I get started with this talk, um, I'd like to acknowledge my research group, um, especially these two students here, Mohamed and James, who did um, all the work in the lab for this. Um, also our collaborators, especially Garrett Malenka for this work, and then our funding. All right, so for those of you who don't know about carbon fiber composites, this is a very brief uh, introduction. So carbon fiber composites um, contain, of course, carbon fiber, which is basically a yarn consisting of thousands of small um, fibers. You can um, weave them together, you can braid them together to generate these textiles, and these textiles are very strong in tension, but they're just textiles, so they are weak in compression or bending. Um, so if you want to create a 3D structure, you have to encase it in a resin, a, a matrix, for example, epoxy, you mold it to a certain shape, and then you can get something like this um, aircraft wing here, for example. So carbon fiber composites are becoming much more um, uh, prominent in, in a lot of different applications these days, uh, ranging from aircraft, automotive, but also biomedical, civil, um, structural engineering. Um, and so the main advantage here is the high strength to weight ratio. Um, the cost used to be a big disadvantage to this, but it's coming down. Um, and so, so another big advantage is that carbon fibers are chemically stable and thermally and electrically conductive. And we're actually going to use that property here electrical conductivity to create smart carbon fiber structures. Um, but the problem is that the failure mechanics is fairly complicated. We don't just have a sim simple single material, we have a composite. And so it's difficult to predict um, um, what the lifetime of, of a structure will be. So to overcome this difficulty, um, we want to do structural health monitoring where we basically measure the health of the structure. We measure, for example, strain, we measure uh, damage in a structure, and that can then tell us what the residual life is or whether we need to do any maintenance. And so one way to do this is external monitoring, for example, using acoustic emissions, eddy currents, but that requires external equipment, which in the field uh, might be an issue. Um, another solution is to do integrated monitoring. So you put sensors directly into your carbon fiber structure or attach to your carbon fiber structure, and that can then measure um, you know, whether it's strain, whether it's damage, to tell you what's going on in the structure. But the issue with these traditional methods, strain gauges, for example, optical fibers, is you basically take another device, another sensor, and try to put it into your structural carbon fiber composites. And so now that leads to a lot of issues. Um, for one, if you want to have a lot of sensors, um, if you want to have an overview of a large structure, what's going on at every position in it, you would need a lot of sensors. So that's very costly, but it could also disrupt the structural integrity if you actually want to embed it right inside your structure. So we need a more organic way to determine the structural integrity of these carbon fiber composites. And so what we can use then is the fact that carbon fibers are electric conductive. So we can actually measure their resistance and determine um, what's happening. But to do that, we can't just start with the carbon fiber, it's just a big conductive uh, sheet. We need to actually somehow interface it with electronics, and that's where printed electronics comes in. Printed electronics is another new um, manufacturing technology that has been explored now for the last uh, couple of decades, and people are always um, talking about it for, for a number of different applications, mainly in the flexible electronics space, wearable electronics, these tattoos, for example, flexible displays, uh, but also um, integrated with textiles. And there are a number of reasons, there are a number of advantages why we um, were interested in electronics for this that might also carry over to carbon fiber uh, composites. So the question here really is, can we do printed electronics on CFRP as a novel substrate? Because printed electronics means you print electronic materials. They can be conductors, semiconductors, insulators, all sorts of electrically active materials. And we can do that on novel substrates, whether it's paper, plastic, um, which is not possible with traditional microfabrication technology, photolithography, and so on, or it might be difficult. 
Um, and CFRP also falls into that category. Can we print elect electrically active materials directly onto this, um, this uh, textile, which otherwise might be difficult with other electronics manufacturing um, technology? The other big advantage of print electronics is it's low cost and especially it's low cost per unit area because we can print very fast. It's typically a one-step process. It's additive, doesn't require etching steps, machining steps. So it can be low cost for large area um, applications. Just think about traditional printing, which we do on large uh, paper substrates. The same goes for print electronics. It can be low cost if you do it on a large enough uh, substrate where you really use the scale-up capability of the printing. And that's exactly what CFRP are, just imagine a large aircraft wing, an automotive uh, application, for example, meter scale. If we print sensors over those large areas, we can do it at a very low cost without human intervention, without running cables or anything like that. Um, so the question here, or what we propose is to print electronics directly onto carbon fiber composites. And then one application, for example, is structural health monitoring. So how do we do that? Well, we print directly onto the dry carbon fiber uh, fabric. So here we have a twill carbon fiber fabric and we print silver contacts on it so that we can directly interface with the carbon fiber. We use um, dispenser or extrusion printing. Uh, here you can see it's basically a cartridge with a paste. So it's a high viscosity paste that will not get absorbed um, by this textile. And then we just translate our nozzle relative to the substrate and extrude this uh, silver. Um, and with that, we can print directly on the carbon fiber. The carbon fiber, as you can see, here is a fairly rough fabric. So it's not as fine as, you know, for example, your clothes. Um, so it's difficult to print onto this, especially with a method like this, um, that where the nozzle is close to the substrate, because we need to extrude a, a high viscosity paste. And so that means we had to do a lot of um, optimization, a lot of studying of the printing parameters so that we can lift up this nozzle and print at a large distance and still get good, uh, good extrusion. And, and we've reported this uh, in this paper here. So then after we've printed this uh, silver onto the carbon fiber, we cure it and then we um, do a traditional um, composites manufacturing process. So we infuse our carbon fiber with epoxy we um, cure it um, in a mold. So yeah, we do compression molding, but we've also done vacuum bagging. And then finally, after we release the mold, um, we have some epoxy covering the silver, but that can be melted off fairly easily. And now what you're left with is silver directly touching the um, carbon fiber. So um, you don't have an issue with, um, you know, um, bad contact between the silver and the carbon fiber. There's no epoxy in between. Um, which is what some other people have done in other process. And now you're just left with printed silver, which you can use then um, just like you would any other printed silver, you can solder to it, or you can just print more silver, print over the epoxy here, and then create whatever circuit um, or device that you want. So we used this um, just to demonstrate a couple of applications. One was a um, actually a heater, so integrated heater in a carbon fiber uh, UAV, so unmanned aerial vehicle um, wing. Here you can see this wing with some contacts printed on it. Um, you know, being in Canada, we think about de-icing. Um, and so if we run a current through this uh, carbon fiber, we can heat it up and then um, de-ice this wing. And, and really the advantage here compared to just attaching some other heater is we add hardly any weight to this, hardly any cost. All we need is we need to print these contacts. Um, and you can see we can get temperatures in excess of 100 degrees. So, so that will be plenty for the icing. And you can also see um, we have, depending on the type of carbon fiber that we use, we get different thermal profiles, which tell you, you know, the, about the current flow. If you use unidirectional um, fibers that just run from one contact to the other, the current doesn't spread as much and we get these heat concentrations. It's much better if you use a twill fabric. So that's something to consider when you do this uh, carbon fiber electronics, what kind of carbon fiber do you use so that you get the electrical um, properties you want and thermal. Um, we also did um, some structural health monitoring with this. So we printed these uh, car, um, current injection electrodes and we printed these voltage um, measurement electrodes and that allowed us to measure potential here basically 
um, because if you apply damage in the central region, you'll change the potential and landscape, as you can see in the simulation. And then you can extract um, what kind of damage you have. And we created an interface socket, a multiplex socket using Kelvin double bridge that then allows us to extract the damage. And so we are able to detect damage. We, we can detect the location and we can de detect the size down to uh, four millimeter squared um, damage. So these two applications have been fairly simple, just silver printed on the carbon fiber, but we're interested to do something a little more complicated in terms of um, electronic device. And so we made some light emitting carbon fiber. Imagine you have a carbon fiber wing like this, and now we want it to light up. Um, and that can be for safety reasons, aesthetic reasons, um, you know, visibility at night, but it would be even cooler if we can use this for structural health monitoring. So can we use this light emitting carbon fiber composite to detect strain, to detect damage? Imagine you have it light up at night and then um, you can do a very simple inspection. If the light is off somewhere, you know there's damage there or maybe of strain. Um, and, and that can make inspection much easier than trying to find a small crack, for example. Um, so we did this using electroluminescence and um, electroluminescent and electroluminescent device fundamentally is very simple. It's a capacitive device, two electrodes, one is transparent on top, one is opaque, and then you have a phosphor in between that when you apply an AC um, signal to the two electrodes, it generates light and you get electroluminescence coming out of this uh, transparent electrode. Of course, electroluminescence is nothing new, but we did it for carbon fibers where the bottom opaque electrode, that's your structural CFRP. So that is the actual structure. Uh, and we use that as an electrode, again, saving weight, saving complexity, but it's using that as the electrode. Then the phosphor is just phosphor particles loaded in epoxy resin, so very similar. It's the same epoxy we use for the um, CFRP matrix. And then we do carbon fiber again for the top electrode. And in this case, we use a mesh, not a woven fabric, but a veil of random fibers, again, encased in epoxy. And so we did a lot of studies optimizing the, the fabrication process, you know, weight coating for the phosphor and so on. And then we get this nice structure here. You can see a cross section and we can see we get nice um, light output and you can actually see the pattern of the carbon fiber um, twill at the bottom here. And depending on our fabrication parameters, we can make it more uniform. We can make it more uh, pattern like this, um, which can help to detect strain, but also can, um, you know, change the aesthetics. So we did a tensile measurement on this then, a stress strain measurement, and you can see that um, as we increase our strain, of course, uh, stress increases, but also our luminance goes down uh, until we hit a failure point, and then our um, light, light output drops by quite a bit. Um, so here you see the initial point of no strain. Uh, you can see the light output. It's somewhat non-uniform, but that depends on our fabrication parameters. Um, and then here you can see the sample just after failure where the stress drops, but also luminance drops. And we can actually see what happened. We see two things. One is up here, the, the brightness is less than in the unstrained sample. So that is this overall drop in illumination, but we also see a local drop in illumination. Now this black area is a crack that forms as the sample failed. And we also can see the piezoresistive response, basically we have a gauge factor of six. And so the resistance of the CFRP increases with strain and that leads to this decrease in illumination. So we can see strain with this, we can also see damage. And so here we have some results from bending tests. Uh, on the left, this was a fairly high strain and you see the whole sample basically failed and it's dark, so that would be very easy to detect. But on the right, you also see a crack that we grew in a fatigue test. And so you can see basically it's one crack here, uh, which you can then see in the light output as well. And so if you just did optical inspection, it might be hard to, to catch a crack like this, but with this light output, you can then very easily see it. You can also see puncture damage and so on. With that, I'd like to conclude and say that we can use carbon fibers that are normally just a structural component, but can also use it as an electronic material to create smart composite structures. And then we can use printed electronics processes to um, interface with this smart CFRP for various applications. And with that, I'd like to thank you and I invite any questions. Thanks.